In this video, we're going to learn how we can get the motion of a cam, a follower, and a valve to work properly in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and I wanted to do a follow-up video to my recent tangent relationship video. Now in that video, if you haven't watched it, you can click here and you can take a look at the new tangent relationship that was added. And we talk about ways in which that works and some ways in which it doesn't. Now in the example of the cam, the follower or rocker arm and the valve, we saw that we could apply that tangent relationship and we could get a couple of pieces of this puzzle to work, but it kind of got to a situation where it was mechanically locked. And the same thing happened when we tried to use contact sets. So what I want to do in this case is I want to talk about a way in which we can get pretty close to getting the results we need. So the first thing to note is you can download this data set from the description in the video if you want to follow along. We have a cam, a follower or a rocker arm, and we have a valve. Now all of these are created and they're using relationships based on a sketch that allows us to rotate and use a slide so that way all the motion is correct. The thing to consider here is that we need to create a tangent relationship between the cam and the follower or the rocker arm. So we're gonna go to assemble, tangent relationship, and we're gonna go between the rocker arm and we're gonna go between our cam lobe. Now, if you followed along the last video, you'll know that it's automatically looking at tangency between the surrounding faces. So if you've drawn this with tangency, then it should work fine. If we go back to a front view, you can see that we can rotate around and it follows the tangency just fine. Now what we want to figure out is the motion of the valve. In the last video we explored applying that tangent relationship, we saw that it did work, but when we try to simulate both of these rotating, it just kind of locked up. We also looked at applying contact sets, and while contact sets in general will work with the rest position, it doesn't give us the motion because again, it becomes mechanically locked and it's having a hard time solving it. So the way that we can get around this is by using assemble and motion links. We need to create a relationship between the rotation of this and the position of the valve. We need to be careful when we do this because we need to understand that the rotation of the rocker arm or the follower is going to be dependent upon its contact point with the cam lobe. So we're not going to ever get this perfect by faking it this way, but we can get it pretty close. By default, the angle is set to 360, but I'm gonna reduce that to one degree. And I've got my distance right now set at 0 0.02, which should be pretty close. It's not gonna be ideal. We can actually try to reduce this and see if it works a little bit better, or we can increase it to 0 0.03 and see if we get a little bit closer. Once we're happy with these results, I'm gonna go one degree and 0 0.03 distance and say okay. Now, as we rotate the cam around, you can see that the valve does move in and out as the rocker arm or the follower rotates. But once again, it's important to note that the distance between the contact point between the rocker arm and the, the cam lobe in this case, to the pivot point, and that distance between there to the point of contact with the valve is constantly changing. So in this situation, when we're completely vertical, you can see that the contact point is right here at about 10 degrees. Now, as we rotate around and we get down to this flat section, you can see the contact point is here and then it moves over to this position when we're on the larger diameter. So as we do that and as we rotate up here, the contact is now up here. And each time we hit a different position on the cam lobe, what ends up happening is we are now moving a, a different amount, the leverage is different between the cam rotating and the valve moving. But this is one way in which we can get a fairly decent animation or we can get the mechanical motion to be pretty close to accurate. There are some differences. And if you're trying to make this just for animation purposes, playing around with the point of rotation here can get you a little bit closer, the angle of the valve and so on. But this is gonna be the best way as of right now that we can get this type of motion to work. So if you have any questions, if you're trying to do this on your own and you struggle, then please let me know. Either leave a comment in the video or send me an email, support at kajicator.com. And again, the intention here 
is not necessarily to point out problems with tangent relationship, but to really understand the limits of it and understand what we can do to get around that when we need to. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.